Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring MacVerf, isolated tenants, external interconnect, route leaking, learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. And we have a few devices that I want to talk about. We have Spine 1, Spine 2, Leaf 1, Leaf 2, the Gateway Router, and Host 1 and Host 3. Now, the spines and leaves are obviously part of the IP fabric in the data center. And we already have VXLAN configured and things like that. And we also have the MacVerfs configured as well. I've also pre-configured some of the other verfs as well. But what I want to point out here is I want to point out first the V10 VR, and this is going to be connecting with the V10 verf. So the V10 verf is a Mac verf, and it's going to be connecting into the V10 VR, which is a virtual router routing instance type. And the IRB10 interface, which is the default gateway for host one, is going to be in that V10 VR virtual router. And then we have the V20 T5 VRF, which is a standard VRF, and it'll have the IRB20 interface, which is the default gateway for host three. And host one, just real quick, host one is using VLAN V10, IP address 10.1.1.1, and VNI 520, which might seem a little strange if you've gone through my other learning bytes with MacVerf, but I'll explain that in a little bit. And then we have VLAN V20 for host three, IP address 10.1.2.3, and also VNI 5020. And so something else I do want to point out is we have this common T5 uh, VRF, which is going to be a standard VRF that the V20 T5 VRF connects into. Okay, so what is going on here? So what's going to happen here is this is beneficial if, well, first, let me start by saying if we were to configure T5 VRFs for the V10 VRF and the V20 VRF, Leaf 2 would need a one-to-one -one mapping as far as T5 VRFs. What we're getting away with here is we're only configuring one common T5 VRF. And so that reduces the amount of configuration you need to do. Instead of having a V10 uh, VRF that are type 5 VRF that it connects into a type 5 V10 VRF over here, and then a V20 T5 VRF that connects into a V20 T5 VRF over here on Leaf 2. We don't have to do that. We only need one T5 VRF on Leaf 2. So that's going to save us a lot of time, especially if you're configuring lots of T5 VRFs here. And so what happens here? What happens is we have, first of all, we have the V20 T5 VRF that connects into the common T5 VRF on Leaf 2. And that's just your normal connection there with T5 VRFs. But what we're doing here that's a little special is the V10 VR. What's going on there is traffic from host one is being, that is destined to something outside that subnet, is going into the V10 VR. And then through route leaking, we're sending that traffic to the V20 T5 VRF, which then can make it out to Leaf 2 in the common T5 VRF. And then from there, it can go to the gateway router and then to the internet and communication can happen there. And another benefit of this, and depending on what you're trying to do, it might not be a benefit, but it's something to be aware of, is by doing this, host one can reach host three, but it doesn't need to go to the gateway router to do so. And that's gonna be, we're gonna see that through the route leaking and whatnot. So just keep that in mind that that might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of Leaf 1 and Leaf 2 and get this going. All right, so here is the CLI of Leaf 1. And let's go ahead and jump into routing instances and we'll go to V10 VR. And we have a little bit pre-configured here. Have instance type virtual router, have the interface RB.10 already placed in there. But we need to uh, get the route leaking going. And so let's go to routing options and then rib group. I mean, interface routes, rib group. If I could type, there we go, rib group. Right, we go to there. Then we can set INET. And we'll just call this group one. We could call it anything we want. And the whole idea here is that 
what we're going to do is we're going to use this room group that we'll, we'll configure next, taking the route of the IRB 10 subnet, that'd be the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 subnet, and putting that in the v20t5 inet.0 table. And then, so let's go ahead and set the routing options, and we have to do this in the main routing instance. Rib groups, I'll call this group one, set up our import rib, and that's gonna be v10 underscore vr dot inet dot zero, and then that's gonna to go to v20 underscore t5 dot inet dot zero. And that'll allow for the route leaking of the interface routes, which we're primarily concerned with that IRB interface. We wanna get the subnet associated with IRB.10 into the v20 dot, or excuse me, the v20 underscore t5 dot inet dot zero routing instance, or routing table that is. Okay, so we're still under, go up a little bit, we're still under routing options under the v10 vr routing instance. Now we have to configure a static route. And it's a static default route, and what we're gonna say here is next table, v20 underscore t5 dot inet dot zero. So what we're saying here is, we're gonna configure a default route for any traffic that comes in, you know, any unknown traffic, or so traffic outside the local subnet for the v10 VLAM, we're going to send that to the v20t5.inet.0 route table. And that should be all we need to do there. So we're good configuring that virtual router. And then let's go up to the v20t5 virtual router, or not virtual router, excuse me, VRF, and we need to configure the eVPN protocol there. Now we've configured a few things here, the instance type, interface, IRB20, the route distinguisher that needs to be unique, and the VRF target or route target that needs to match with the common T5 VRF on LEAF2. So that's already been pre-configured to save some time. And we'll set protocols, uh, eVPN, IP prefix routes, advertise direct next top, and then we need to say encapsulation, VXLAN, VNI, this needs to match. Remember that the VNI we're using here is 2020. So this will need to match on LEAF2 as well. And then we need to set an export. We're gonna say V20 T5, and that's already been pre-configured to save some time. And so you can see our configuration here, everything looks good. And so then let's look at that, that policy. And we'll say, what is that V20 T5? And you can see here, what we're doing here is we're sending those two routes that represent the subnets of host one and host three, or IRB 10 and IRB 20 respectively, and we're sending that along. Now, you might ask yourself, how are we getting the subnet for host one, which is the 10.1.1.0 slash 24, in this route table for V20 T5? How are we doing that? And recall that is from that rib group that we configured with the v10 vr routing instance we configured a rib group here to say hey take my interface routes and put that into the v20 t5 routing instance or routing table that inet.0 routing table for that routing instance and so that's how that's getting there and so now that we have the export policy we set up v20 t5 we can advertise that to leaf2 so let's go ahead and commit the configuration, see if I'm missing something here. And commits just fine, that's great. So let's go ahead and jump to Leaf2. All right, so here is the CLI for Leaf2. Let's first go into the routing instances, call this common underscore T5. And you can see here, nothing is configured. So we need to fully configure this. We'll set uh, the instance type to verf. Uh, and then we'll say a route distinguisher. This needs to be unique, of course. We're gonna base this off the loopback address of leaf two. And then we need to set the, set the route target. Excuse me, the, yeah, the route target was the VRF target command. We'll say target colon one, two, three, colon 20. Recall this needs to match what, with what we have for the V20 T5 verf on leaf one. And so that is important matches. And then when you set the protocols, EVPN, and this is going to be very similar to what we just configured on Leaf One. Advertise direct next hop encapsulation VXLAN. Uh, VNI, of course, needs to match. And then the export. Now, this export T5, what we're doing here is we're taking the default route that we're getting from the gateway router and sending that to Leaf One. And that'll attract any unknown destin or traffic that's for destined for unknown destinations. 
that'll attract it towards leaf2, which will then send it to the gateway router because we're getting a default route from that gateway router. And we can look at that policy real quick. And you can see it's just grabbing a default route and exporting it. So it'll take that default route and export it as a T5 eVPN route. Okay, so cool, that's done. So let's, we need to go to the routing options here in the main routing instance, and we need to configure some static routes because we need to be able to tell any return traffic how to get to host one and host three. And so we'll configure a static route for those subnets 1.1.0 slash 24 and next table common underscore t5 dot inet dot zero and then we'll do the same thing for the host three subnet and of course this is for the return traffic say host one ping something like 8.8.8.8 well when 8.8.8.8 responds it's going to make it to leaf two which then needs to know how to get to 1.1.1.1, which is host one. And it'll look at the route table, see the static route, say is use common t5.inet.0 and send it along to leaf one. Now, why is that route there? Recall that on leaf one, we created an export policy that sends that traffic or sends those routes to leaf two. And recall we use route leaking to get host one subnet into the v20 t5 verf on leaf one so a little complicated but uh that's how it works okay so now we need to configure the rib group and we'll just call this group one for lack of imagination on my part and then configure the import rib we'll say inet.0 to common underscore t5 dot inet.0 and why do we need to do this well we need to do this because that default route that is being sent from the gateway router is making it into the inet.0 table. Well, we need to get that default route into the common t5.inet.0 table. So then that default route can be exported as a type 5 eVPN route towards leaf one. And so just keep in mind that's how that's working there. And then let's go to protocols, uh, BGP group, gateway router, and have a look at things there. Do need to configure a little bit here. This is all set up. We've got an export policy. That looks good. We'll look at that export policy here in just a moment. But we need to set or apply that rib group we just created since we will be getting that route through BGP. And we'll say set family inet unicast rib group and specify group one. And so we're good there. And let's take a quick look at that policy statement. And we can see here what this is doing here is this is taking the routes for 10.1.1.0 slash 24 and .2 slash 24, host one and host three subnets, and sending that to the gateway router. Now, how is Leaf2 getting those routes in the main routing instance? Well, recall we configured some static routes. And those static routes are now in, or will be once we commit the configuration, they will be in the main routing instance in the inet.0 route table. And so that's how those are making it towards the gateway router. And so let's go ahead and commit the configuration. And unless I forgot something, this should commit just fine. And now the configuration is complete for this learning byte. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrate how to configure isolated tents with an external interconnect and route leaking with MacVerf in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.